I hope this finds you well. Ever heard the phrase stop and frisk or Terry stop? Well, the case today is where it comes from. A Terry stop allows law enforcement to stop an individual and frisk them for weapons without probable cause. Today's case is Terry versus Ohio, decided in 1968. Here are the facts. A detective in Cleveland was patrolling downtown when he noticed two men, Terry and Chilton, the two kept walking back and forth between one particular store and a corner where they would confer. A third man was also seen by Officer McFadden on one of the meeting occasions. McFadden, believing the men were casing the joint, approached them and asked for their IDs. The men began to be evasive. McFadden decided to spin Terry against the wall and pat him down. He felt what seemed to be a gun and ordered the men into the store. The pat down of Terry was on his outer garments only. In the store, McFadden took a revolver out of Terry's coat and found another gun in the coat of one of the other men. They were both charged with carrying a concealed weapon. The court had to decide whether police can stop and frisk an individual they suspect to be armed and dangerous without probable cause to arrest. The court ended up holding that under the Fourth Amendment, of the United States Constitution, a police officer may stop a suspect on the street and frisk them without probable cause to arrest if the officer has a reasonable suspicion that the person has committed or is committing or is about to commit a crime and has a reasonable belief that that person may be armed and presently dangerous. The court had to balance the protection of the Fourth Amendment against the danger to the public or bystanders or cops themselves. Remember, the Fourth Amendment protects a person from unreasonable searches and seizures. Here, there is both a seizure, which is the stop, and a search, which is the frisk. The court called a stop and frisk minimally intrusive, and the officer is allowed to conduct the stop and frisk as long as that officer suspects objectively that the person is armed and dangerous. Justice Douglas disagreed with the court and dissented, arguing that nothing less than probable cause can justify forcible detention of a person. My personal opinion is I agree with Justice Douglas. I think that probable cause should be required for every kind of stop. Again, my personal opinion, stop and frisk has taken a sinister approach in that individual's liberties are routinely infringed upon through the use of stop and frisk. So you're probably wondering where are they now? Well, unfortunately, I couldn't find any credible information on Terry. I did find a number of reports that reported him as being a convicted of a sex crime years later. But I can't say that these reports are credible just because his name is so very common. Thanks for watching.